Happy Veterans Day, also known as Armistice Day. This is when we recognize and celebrate, honor all those who served in the armed forces, uh, and also specifically back in World War I when they signed the armistice on the Western Front. And so uh, we just bless all those people who have served or are currently serving or have risked their lives and sacrificed for the sake of freedom. Today is also a special day for me and my family personally. It's the anniversary of my mom's passing five years ago from brain cancer. And just felt led to just share the story, the testimony of that, because it really gives insight to how good God is, even in the face of things that are horrible, such as sickness and disease and ultimately death. And my parents immigrated here to the United States uh, a little bit before I was born. And my father worked as a physician in Michigan for many years. And then they retired out here in Southern California. And uh, my older brother and his family were down here as well as my family. And uh, after they moved down here, not too long after that, my mom was diagnosed with glioblastoma, a uh, really vicious form of brain cancer. And it was a two year long journey with her uh, undergoing surgery and other treatments. And um, I was praying, my family and I were praying for miraculous healing. We have seen healing, we believe in healing and we we're praying for that. And I remember one time in the beginning of October, five years ago, I woke up early in the morning and I heard the Lord ask me this question, is it okay if I take your mom? And I was so shocked by this. It was so early in the morning. And I immediately responded, you don't need my permission to take her. And he kept asking me the same question. Is it okay if I take your mom? And I kept giving, I kept giving the same response. And finally, I, I went downstairs uh, just to read the Bible. And when I opened the Bible, it turned right to the beginning of Song of Songs, the Song of Solomon right after the book of Psalms, and God proceeded to tell me this was the reason why he wanted to take my mom. He taught me that this book was actually a funeral message. Apparently, when someone dies on earth, there is a funeral, but in heaven, it's like a wedding ceremony. You have to understand that Christianity, God in the Bible, he loves to use metaphors metaphors. And perhaps the greatest metaphor that he uses is the idea of marriage. Paul says in Ephesians 5, for this reason, a man shall leave his mother and father and be united to his wife. He's quoting Genesis 1, and the two will become one flesh. And then he goes on to say, this is a profound mystery, but I am actually talking about Christ and the church. And so this idea of marriage is a very mysterious metaphor that God uses to employ. And this is how God was speaking to me through the Song of Songs, which is actually uh, considered the greatest song ever written because it, it talks about, it sings about this love between Solomon and the Shulamite in marriage. And as he was leading me through this book of Song of Songs and, and showing me all of this, finally, at the end of this encounter, I just get down on my knees and I pray, God, you don't need my permission to take my mom, but I give you my permission. And the very next week, my mother's health started taking a serious decline uh, to worsen until about four weeks later until she passed. And, and that was November 11th, uh, 2016. And during that week, I was actually in Tijuana, Mexico for a mission trip with uh, Georgian and Winnie Banoff, they go every year to Tijuana, and they serve this community that kind of lives in a garbage dump area. And they come and they bring a, a, a fancy meal with silverware, tables, tablecloth, there's music, and dancing. And while we were there, after the meal ser uh, serving people, there happened to be an impromptu wedding ceremony from a couple of the village because Georgian was, was talking with this couple that was there who was getting fed, enjoying the dinner and found out that uh, they were together, but they never actually had a wedding ceremony. And so he, he said, well, 
why don't we have one right now? And so we just had an impromptu wedding ceremony. It was amazing. People gathered around to bless, give gifts. Uh, they made a wedding dress out of the tablecloths. It was really beautiful. They had flowers. Uh, people were donating rings and money, uh, all these things for them, lavishing them. And we had this wedding ceremony that he officiated there in the trash dump, and they were just so happy. And it was just such a beautiful picture of joy and love in the midst of dirt and extreme poverty. And as I was reflecting on that, I went back to my room at the end of the night and a friend had texted me that he had a vision at around 9.06 p.m. And he heard this beautiful song and he saw Jesus singing over a woman at her bedside. And my friend had never actually met my mother personally, but somehow he knew it was her in the bed. And he said that, he saw my mom begin to smile as she started recognizing the voice of Jesus looking at his face. So uh, we have this wedding at the dump. I come back to this text and uh, of a friend who says he has this vision of Jesus singing over my mom at her bedside, and she's so happy. Seven hours later on Friday, November 11th in 2016, my mother passes away at 404 a.m. in a room with my father holding her hand after a 17-month battle with brain cancer. And so I, I take a train the next day. I leave Mexico early to get back home. And my father asked me to officiate her memorial service on the following Tuesday. And during the service, my son Isaac reads a passage from Song of Songs, and I share about how uh, though we may mourn the loss of my mom on earth, we may also join in the heavenly celebration that she is experiencing with Jesus. And we have that ceremony and we talk, I talk about the song of songs. And then uh, I hear the Holy spirit tell me you can't have a wedding without a funeral. And it was so interesting. Uh, I was just so, so shocked by this statement because I never heard it before. It just sounds so strange. You can't have a wedding without a funeral first. And in a span of one week, that one week where my mom passed away, I participated in a wedding in Mexico in Tijuana, that impromptu wedding. We had the memorial service of my mom on Tuesday. And then we had a young couple that we knew that wanted me to officiate their wedding the very next day on Wednesday. And it was so beautiful, one of the most beautiful wedding ceremonies I'd ever been a part of. And then uh, the, the next day, Thursday, we had the graveside service of my mom. And so just in that span of one week, I had two funeral services, a memorial service and a funeral service and uh, two weddings. And uh, so the Lord was trying to teach me this concept that though on earth, it may seem like a funeral in heaven, there is a wedding celebration. And then following that, uh, maybe a few weeks later, we were going to visit my dad down in Orange County, and it was uh, <clears throat> the night before I told my, my youngest daughter, Anna, who was four years old at the time, and I said, oh, we're going to go visit Papa. That's what we call, uh, that's what they called my father, Papa. And we said, we're going to go visit Papa tomorrow. And she immediately responds in her four-year-old voice, oh, and Nana too, which is my mom. And I told her, oh, you know, Nana is in heaven, but we can ask the Holy Spirit and he can maybe show you Nana. And so then I just prayed with her that night to have a dream and that the Holy Spirit would take her and show her Nana. And the next morning, I'd forgotten all about that prayer with Anna. And she comes to me in the morning and she goes, oh, I had a dream last night. And I said, oh, that's nice. What did you dream about? And she goes, Nana. And I was so shocked. I'd forgotten about the prayer. And so I started interrogating her, asking her all these questions. So oh, what did she look like? And what was she wearing? And, and my, my daughter gave all these details, very specific. She says, oh, Nana was so pretty. And she had on this rainbow dress. And uh, I was like, rainbow dress? That is so weird. And I go, did you see anyone else? And she goes, I also saw a great grandmother, which is my mom's mom, who had passed away uh, a little bit before my mom passed away. And we would take our kids to go visit her in LA. And it was amazing that she remembered her. And <clears throat> And so I asked her what, what she was doing, and she said, oh, great-grandmother was talking to Jesus about our family. 
And so this was so amazing to hear a four-year-old talk about all these details. And so later in the day, she shares the exact same details with her mom. And then that night we go and visit my father and he, uh, she shares the exact same details with him. And so uh, that, that evening when we return back home, I find on my phone an email from a friend who was actually in attendance at the memorial service for my mom. And she says, I'm sorry, I have taken so long to uh, write this, but I wanted to share that during the memorial service, I had a vision of your mom dancing with Jesus, and she was really beautiful, and she had on this white dress, and every time she moved, rainbow swirls would appear on her dress. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing because my daughter just had a dream the night before of my, my mom wearing a rainbow dress. And so this is just the goodness of God, just being so gracious to us and uh, really encouraging us that there is life beyond what we know and see here on earth. In fact, faith is this substance this assurance of things hoped for, certain thing, certainty of what we do not see. And this testimony of my mom, uh, it really is what Jesus declared, that uh, God is a God of the living and not the dead. Even though the shadow of death may fall upon people here on earth, uh, it can never overcome true life, the life force of the Holy Spirit. And that we are meant to live for eternity, and there's a whole other existence, reality, that most people do not see or are not aware of, but they can access it simply by faith. And so I believe that. I actually feel that uh, my mom is praying for us, even to this day, interceding for us. She's perfectly healthy and whole, no more cancer, and she's vibrant and she's in perfect union with Jesus and loving us from heaven and encouraging us and especially uh, praying for her grandkids because she loves them so much. And uh, I, I also believe praying for my amazing dad, uh, you know, because this was probably the, the biggest loss for him. I've married for over 40 years and he did such an amazing job, spectacular job in taking care of my mom as she was dealing with this cancer and declining near the end. And so I just want to share this on this Veterans Day, this day of remembrance and honoring memorial that I honor my mom. I honor you, mom. I bless you. Thank you for praying for us and for really loving us here on earth, but continuing to love us. Uh, in heaven. And this may this be an encouragement to any of you who have lost loved ones, that God is a God of the living and not the dead, that we were created for eternity. And just to close this uh, testimony, uh, God is so good because not only did he give this testimony about my mom, but I also have a spiritual mom. He gave me a spiritual mom when we moved on from Reading uh, 11 years ago back to Pasadena. And today is my spiritual mom's birthday. And so happy birthday, Mama Sue. On the day of my mom's passing, it's also the day of my spiritual mom's birthday. And so this is just the goodness of God. Only God could orchestrate all these things and teach us that death is not the end, that we don't have to uh, uh, be discouraged or depressed or, or uh saddened by the events that take place on earth because we are created for eternity and God works out all things for the good of those who love him. And so bless you just to believe and have that encouragement, that seed of faith, even a faith as small as a mustard seed. He will open up the door to you to experience this realm of eternity and have this hope because these three things remain, faith, hope, and love. And he wants us to experience and encounter that perfect love in all that we do. So bless you to believe, have that hope, and encounter his love today.